what are the pros and cons of having different accounts if you've got project-based team that you may be considering splitting out to a separate account. Should filmmakers opt for a secondary add-on domain or alias domain for each film project to manage separate communication channels and meetings from their primary production company? Considering costs, records management upon film projects, entity closure, and control panel retention of add-on domains. I guess not knowing heaps about the industry, that would very much depend on who owns that data after the film is produced and released? Like, does the distribution company own that or does the production company own that? Because if the production company owns that, I would probably be keeping most things in my own Google Workspace account and treating each film that I'm producing like a project. You might set up separate organizational units in your admin panel. You might set up separate shared drives. You may even set up separate security and permissions groups for certain people to get access to certain resources. But if it's fundamentally data owned by my company, for simplicity's sake, and for the sake of keeping costs down, I would want to keep those domain names under one account. And then if they're just in one place, it makes moving data around really simple. Now, I'll show you how some of those things work in the admin panel, and then I'll draw it out for you on what that organizational structure may look like. What are the pros and cons of having different accounts if you've got project-based team that you may be considering splitting out to a separate account? First up, let's jump into our admin panel. And for that, we go to admin.google.com. And some of the things that we may use in this admin panel to differentiate between one account and another account are things like groups and even organizational units as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now that I'm in my admin panel, for me to set up a security group, I would go to the groups service here. And inside the group service, I would create a group. And if there was a group of people I wanted to be working on a particular project, I would probably create a group just for that project. Okay, great. The other thing I may do is create an organizational unit for my users. So if I go to the users menu here, you'll see I've got a number of organizational units under our main company. If I click manage org units, I can create a fresh organizational unit. And this is where I may choose to create a unit just for that project. And under that unit, I can set certain settings. Now, this is the time where you may choose to set particular security settings for a group of staff. And that might look like something like I don't want any staff in a security group to be sharing documents outside my company. And to do that, we would first set up the security group inside our admin panel, and then we would go and look for a particular setting around sharing. So if I search for drive sharing, it's gonna bring up the different sharing options that I've got for drive. And inside my sharing settings for Drive here, if I want to apply these settings just to a particular organizational unit, well, then I would scroll down. I would choose the existing organizational unit. And you can see here, initially, the settings are inherited from the top level IT Genius organizational unit. And if, as an example, I want to change the setting for my concierge organizational unit to off, so that no one can share files outside of the domain, I would choose the off setting and then hit save. And you'll see here, it says override, which means that I'm overriding the settings of the top level of the organization. So just this subgroup of staff are gonna see these settings being applied to their account. So that's the first step. We've created security groups and then we can also create organizational units and apply different settings to different organizational units. What else may I choose to do if it's just a certain part of the business? Well, I may wanna create a shared drive and that shared drive inside of my Google Drive would be a great place to put project related files that are specific to that particular project. And so if I open up my shared drives, if I hit new shared drive, when I create a shared drive here and start adding people to the shared drive, I can add that new security group that I just created and with that security group, restrict the shared drive access to just a certain number of people. Now, let's pause and take a bit of a zoom out here because we've really got to look at, well, who are the people in this business? Who are the people on this project? And 
Should we have them in one account or should we have them in a second account? Let's uh, go and take a look at the difference between these two different strategies. So imagine I have two separate Google Workspace accounts. We'll call this one Workspace 1 and we'll call this one Workspace 2. And remember that when I create mailboxes in each one of these accounts, every time I create a mailbox, I have to pay for that mailbox. And I like to refer to these as buckets of email. Each bucket of email, which is a mailbox that someone can send or receive emails from, is something that they basically have to pay for, or you, the business owner, has to pay for. Now, if you decided that in this instance, your company is workspace account number one, and your film project is workspace account number two, if you have one staff member, and let's say you've got staff member Peter here, and Peter needs an email address both for your production company, and Peter also needs an email address for your additional mailbox, well then, Peter needs to actually have a mailbox and a bucket of email in both workspace accounts, meaning that you're going to have to pay in both workspace accounts. So you need two buckets of email for that to work. If you were a production company and you decided, okay, every time we run a film, we set up a second workspace account for the number of staff that you have shared between the two companies or the two organizations, you're going to have to double up on their mailboxes. The other thing is you're going to be sharing data back and forward between these accounts. And it does work, but it can get a little bit messy. Sometimes when you're in a chat room, the owner of that chat room has to be the one to make any changes to settings within that chat room. And so let's say you've set up a number of chat spaces in company number one, and you've got some users in company number two that are participating in those chat spaces. Now, that's absolutely fine. You can participate in chat spaces that have been started by another company. But let's say the boss of the film is trying to change some settings on the production company's chat room, but they can't because they're using their secondary email address from the external workspace account. Now, this doesn't only happen in chat. It happens across multiple different apps across the Google Workspace ecosystem when you're working with multiple accounts. And so it can be a little bit messy if you're running one business or one organization with team that have shared roles across two different Google accounts. Now, and the one instance where it's useful to have multiple Google accounts is where potentially at some point in the future, you need to completely separate these accounts and they are both going to go their separate ways. Obviously, this makes sense if you're a business owner and you have a side hustle and that side hustle has a bunch of different contractors or different owners in the business that don't own your first main primary business. It makes it easy for you to separate this business and for people to go their separate ways. That's the only real reason why we would recommend using multiple accounts. Large multinationals that have workspace for multiple brands quite often will have them all under one Google Workspace account. Even large franchises that we work with that have hundreds or even thousands of locations will use one Workspace account and then each location, even though they're different business unit and entity in itself, will sit within an organizational unit inside the Google Workspace account. So as much as possible, it's easier to keep it all in one place. And you never have to worry about doubling up with multiple mailboxes and paying for them. If you have multiple domain names and your domain name probably looks something like yourcompany.com in the production company and yourfilm.com. If you have Peter who's working inside this business and Peter needs to email from both of those emails, well, Peter can email from company.com and Peter can also, if you create an add-on domain, email from film.com and he can receive both of those to one mailbox. He only has to pay for one bucket of email and so you only have to incur that cost once. Now, of course, if you've got multiple accounts and you want to bring them into one right now, or you've got a lot of stuff in one account and you need to split it out to multiple, that's where a migration comes in. It's not a crazy process, but you know it is time consuming and it does take some technical finesse to make sure it happens without any data loss 
and importantly, without any downtime to your emails. If you want some help with the migration, our team can help scope it out for you. Click on the link just down below this video and our team will be very happy to chat about what your particular situation is. We've helped small businesses right up to large publicly traded organizations both merge accounts in from separate workspace accounts and take single workspace accounts and split them out to multiple accounts as well. So whatever scenario you've got and wherever you want to get to, our team will be sure to be able to help you out if you're interested in investing in our services. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.